Here's a funny picture, I guess, of me and him at one of my birthday parties. He was the most generous person I've ever met. I miss him, and I'm going to miss him every day for the rest of my life. Darren Duncan was in the middle of mourning his best friend, Brent Kopaka, when he first saw it. Posts online falsely claiming Kopaka was somehow tied to the deaths of four college students in Moscow, Idaho. He was a soldier who went over there to fight for us, and now I got to defend him after he died. He's not here to talk about it or defend himself. None of it was true, but Darren unfortunately wasn't alone. Still reeling in its grief, the Moscow community was also hit by a storm of misinformation and lies that would make healing seem impossible. For anyone intrigued by the Idaho murders, there's been plenty of content out there over the last six months. YouTube, Reddit, TikTok, you name it. On November 13th, 2022, four students, Kelly Gonzalez, Maddie Mogan, Zana Kernodal, and Ethan Chapin were stabbed to death in the middle of the night at their off-campus home at the University of Idaho. Then when there was no arrest for several weeks, some web sleuths decided to take the investigation into their own hands. I just want to give a quick and crazy update that's happening. This is what I think happened to Idaho murders. All four of them had been stabbed. 28-year-old Brian Koberger was just arraigned. His trial is set to begin in October. For so many in the Moscow community, the national online response to the murders clouded what really should be at the center of the story, the lives lost. They loved life. They lived life to the fullest, both of them. Kaylee Gonzalez and Maddie Mogan were both seniors and longtime best friends. If I had one or two words to describe Maddie May, it would be just an, an angel. She just made me proud. One of their other roommates, 20-year-old Zana Kernodal, was also killed that night, alongside her boyfriend, Ethan Chapin. Zana was just an incredible person. I've never met someone like Zana before, ever. Ethan was a member of the Sigma Chi fraternity and loved sports. He was also a triplet. His brother and sister were both students at the university. From family members to classmates to community members, most were in some way affected by the senseless murders. And in the months that followed, conspiracy theories and false allegations have reopened the community's wounds. We've been about to kick this off. We have about 135 people waiting on us already. Last time we had 18, 1900 people in the live chat. It's a drunk turkey show, mother trucker! Daniel J and his two friends dreamed up the idea for the Drunk Turkey YouTube show and podcast over late night talks and a lot of beers. The three friends asked we don't use their last names due to safety concerns. Our initial goal was conspiracies, uh, UFOs, aliens, ghosts, things of that nature. Daniel R, who goes by Big Blue, is one of the co-hosts. When did you guys really start to see subscribers change? I think it was after, it was for sure when we started doing the Idaho case. Welcome back to the Drunk Turkey Murder Mystery Show. Today we're trying to track down a potential suspect. The team has recorded over 100 episodes on the so-called King Road murders to date. Daniel J is a former police officer. But with drunk turkey, he says he's just a regular guy. But doesn't it kind of muddy the water, you know, when you have so many people that are not directly involved in the investigation of the case, giving all sorts of information? How are people supposed to know what is the truth and what's not? When it comes to, like, true life and true crime and stuff, we try to stay fact-based for the most part. Like, is there speculation and opinions? Yes, it's ours. The three friends say they don't have any bad intentions and are careful about the sourcing they use. They sometimes add disclaimers. But still, they've amplified a number of false allegations tied to the murders of the four students by just having various guests and listeners call into their show. In one episode, a woman called in and falsely claimed Brent Kopaka was tied to the crime. One of Brent's close friends has said that he felt like that podcast ruined his friend's legacy. How does that make you feel? I mean, I, I feel pretty bad that, but I don't think it ruined his legacy. I mean, 
at that time we weren't even that big to where everybody in the world heard it. I mean, if it's personal to him, I, I apologize. The Moscow police continuously push back against the false allegations throughout the investigation. The best thing that most of people can do to help is to stop with any kind of rumors and just seek official information that comes out of the Moscow Police Department. Warning those spreading misinformation that anyone engaging in threats or harassment, whether in person, online, or otherwise, needs to understand that they could be subjecting themselves to criminal charges. Duncan was devastated to see Kopaka's name falsely tied to the crime weeks after he died, and it went far beyond the drunk turkey show. All this stuff that was not true at all, and it's all said by people who don't know him, never even met him. According to investigators, back on December 15th, officers responded to Kopaka's Washington home after reports that he had threatened his roommates, the home just miles away from the King Road crime scene. He barricaded himself for hours, at one point firing a gun. Police say they fired back and shot Kopaka. In Kopaka's obituary, his family said he had fought a courageous battle against PTSD for years after returning home from serving in Afghanistan. We reached out to the family but did not hear back. Duncan says mourning Kopaka while also defending his legacy has been painful. Do you have a message for those people that continue to bring up Brent's name? You guys are not detectives. Leave people alone, let the professionals do it, and just shut your mouth. Our thanks to Maria. We reached out to TikTok and YouTube about their efforts to address misinformation, but they did not provide comment. You can see more of Maria's full report, including those caught in the crosshairs of false accusations online on Impact by Nightline, now streaming on Hulu. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.